A surprising event occurred in a recent YouTube video when Mike Tyson and Diddy were captured in an intriguing scenario, leading to a lot of conjecture about the occurrence. It has sparked speculation that Diddy may have sent Mike Tyson a very personal invitation, piqued viewers' curiosity, and adding to the mystery are revealing revelations that Diddy allegedly used his ex-girlfriend Cassie to lure actors. However, for the time being, this could be an intriguing tea because, despite their long-standing friendship, the recent video revealed a connection that seemed different from their typical friendship, with Diddy acting uncomfortable around Tyson. Fans theorize that Tyson may have profited from the many rumors surrounding Diddy, adding an intriguing layer to their dynamic. With you, though, he was chill, good, awesome, and awesome. While there has always been a Due to fans' curiosity about Mike Tyson's life, there have been rumors regarding his orientation during a moment where Tyson boldly declared he would engage in certain actions until others liked him. Tyson is known for his involvement in various controversies, from biting an opponent's ear to struggling with de-misuse. You punk white boy, I sacrificed so much for my life. Can I at least get laid? You know what I mean? I've been robbed of most of my money. Can I at least get laid? Questions about Tyson's personal life surfaced when he confronted Boozy about his preferences, sparking new rumors about the incident. When he appeared on the podcast Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson, the former professional boxer used the opportunity to address the Louisiana rapper's recent transphobic remarks made towards Dwayne Wade's daughter Zia. Tyson confronted Boozy, asking why he felt compelled to discuss the topic. At the very least, get a blow up. Why do you say things about people who might be HS? Tyson questioned. Do you feel there's a possibility that you're an HS, and by disrespecting them, you further yourself from being an HS? That seemed to have nothing to do with him. I'm thinking you may like that as Bads responded no. Tyson said, I really commented on Dwayne Wade's situation, because I got offended because it's a child. You know, if it had been a mother effing 19-year-old, 18-year-old grown person, I probably wouldn't have. I know I wouldn't. I'm straight and narrow. If you're straight, then why do you offend people? Having said anything, Boozy asserted that he thought a 12-year-old child should just stay a child and that they weren't mature enough to make such a significant decision, a viewpoint that many people view as transphobic. Tyson replied, quoting, I agree with you 100. I agree with you right, but check this out. Boozy finally acknowledged that he occasionally needs to shut up, but he also stated that he stands by his earlier claims regarding Wade's child. Reactions to Tyson's defense of Boozy were divided with some seeing it as a justified response on behalf of Boo's controversial remarks about Zaid, the transgender daughter of Dwayne Wade, drew significant criticism for being widely condemned as transphobic. The Wade family openly expressed their support for Zia's transition, but some felt personally attacked by them. On the other hand, others contended that Tyson might have been defending a minority group against Boo's perceived transphobic remarks. But Zia took to Instagram begging Dwayne Wade to stop Zia from quoting him as a girl. At the time, Wade remarked in a video, bro, for real, if he's going to be homosexual, let him be gay, but don't chop his D off, bro, don't dress him as a woman dog. Boo's recent disparaging remarks towards Zia Wade were just the most recent in a string of hateful remarks he has made against the 12-year-old. Despite the fact that he hasn't reached his peak yet and hasn't made his final decisions, don't cut his thing off, Dwayne Wade, the LGBTQ community has experienced a significant understandable public backlash over the past few years. The majority of people have urged Boozy to respect the privacy of the young girl and her family, believing that they are trying to convert everyone to homosexuality. In contrast, gay and gay-related content is widely available. Many in the general public praised Mike Tyson for his willingness to confront Boozy's hate speech, citing his own self-discovery journey and struggles with a tragic and hateful past. Tyson also opened up about his personal experiences on TMZ Live, revealing, I used to be boozy. This admission not only suggested Tyson's understanding of the situation, deal of the mindset, but also, for some reason, led to conjecture about Tyson's own complicated relationship with his own admission that he had previously struggled with self-hatred. It was a moving moment when Tyson revealed his evolution and linked it to Boo's personal experiences, offering a route towards development and comprehension. Additionally, Lil Enzi once asked Tyson. In response, Tyson stated, I talked to some of the great fighters that were gay, but I'm just saying, from my ignorance, I said, you know, I have friends. I have gay people in my family and a gay sister. It's just the way we live our lives. We love each other. Tyson had previously been anti-gay in the 1990s. Nas continued the conversation, probing Tyson about boundaries and conflicts, 
such as whether everything was off limits if he had a disagreement with a gay person or if he was approaching their life in a way that was acceptable. Tyson answered by saying that he approached everyone's life regardless of their sexual orientation. I'm just a man out here trying to enjoy my life. I was born poor, so I've never had nuts, dude. I don't know how to act right, but the truth is that I'm just here to be myself. I don't care what you think of me or who thinks about it. Though it could be interpreted as Tyson wanting to make sure Diddy received more screen time. The recent Profit Muscles video has only fueled rumors that Tyson could be gay or something similar. I am, however, not sure why this became fodder for public speculation, leading to rumors that Tyson could be gay or something similar. Plenty of airtime. The real reasons for this decision are still unknown, especially in light of the apparent chemistry between Diddy and Mike Tyson on screen. Diddy and Mike Tyson have a long-standing friendship and working relationship. They appeared to be enjoying their time together on the show despite rumors of a close relationship between them. Naturally, rumors of Diddy and Mike's romantic relationship had to spread online, raising concerns about Diddy's orientation and raising the possibility that he may also be a member of the LGBT community. Notably, rapper 50 Cent, who is well known for his ongoing feud with Diddy, has been one of the voices asserting that Diddy is a member of the LGBT community, is a part of their tumultuous past, and 50 Cent has not shied away from calling Diddy, quote, day even as recently as 2018. In an interview with The Breakfast Club on social media, influencer, author, and winemaker Josh Ostrovsky, also known as the Fat Jew, reportedly related a terrifying story about Diddy and his ass based pals. Josh is well known for his several ventures, but it appears that social media hasn't always been a good place for him. A lot of people felt one way, and a lot of people felt the other way. I felt like I was put in the middle, in the face of Josh Ostrovsky faced backlash after he allegedly exposed Diddy for dubious actions, which, given Diddy's generally positive public image, drew criticism from Nissan. The incident happened at a party held on Star Island in Miami, which is the same location as P. Diddy's private residence. The problem was, and I was like, you know, the internet is for yelling and Mansion, supposedly present together with a well-known house producer acting as the celebration's DJ, Josh allegedly saw things that prompted him to disclose the details of what he saw at the Star Island party, specifically at Diddy's private mansion, became a topic of interest and fan conjecture essentially me and like beautiful like ethnic models, like just beautiful. Ladies who I clearly had no interest in, as you heard in the video saying, only attractive women. It's like, you know, my man is telling me that, like every third person is an executive with high end, behind the scenes guys that I don't recognize. Josh may have stumbled because he was afraid of being mistakenly recorded in front of up to 100 people, and people began to question why there could only be women at the party and no men. However, what really happened was that Josh went to find the restroom, and from there he simply descended one flight of stairs. Ascending a flight of stairs and discovering himself deep within the winding passageways of the mansion room. It doesn't have a bathroom, which is odd because every room in a dungeon should have one. I open a door, and there are several men in that room. Josh started to believe that maybe Diddy was putting on a show to invite attractive women since he couldn't find any bathrooms, and there were males lying in the rooms. You know, if two individuals lie like they're spooning, they must be a pair or performing some sort of act. Josh did not sit back silently and actually claimed that Diddy's after parties, and parties are no less than anxiety, because when you leave those parties, the scenes quote haunt you for your life. He said pretty much everything I've got a plethora of. Josh claimed that no one could find what was actually happening behind that pool packed with women. At this point, aren't we all suffering from extreme anxiety? The experiences we have, like driving around in a convertible with a llama in New York, are what people wish they could do. A rapper recently talked about his encounter with Diddy, saying that after spending a fun evening at his house, they went to a club. He claims Diddy brought him to a homosexual bar, which may not seem strange to most people, but he claims the exhibit makes him feel uncomfortable. He didn't think much about it until he noticed something in the room that made him feel uneasy, at which point we, you know, went to the house. Afterwards, you know he asked us to his house because you wanted to go to the club, which is good. In addition, this display alluded to his awful experience with Diddy, where he was hauled in and said things like, you know what I'm saying? What do you mean? That's the devil. The devil has a nice mouth, I thought. Diddy even had the guts to ask his victim about the girls and then show them the actual show that usually occurs at his parties. He even related a strange story about... I was like, what does that mean that me conf? So then, so then I go back in the house. 
What is the point of saying anything about any other person when they are not even bothering you, but this is Diddy who? After hearing Diddy talk about Superhead, she said she would videotape you with her fingers in the... Exhibit also acknowledged that Diddy may have had an incident with Superhead at the moment. He said, quote, I guess he got some prior incident with her that he doesn't want anybody to know about, but it seems that, after all, Diddy consistently presents himself as superior to the young rappers and faces a growing number of allegations. 50 Cent started making fun of